This is a group of Christians at their summer camp in Iran, singing a song about trusting their Lord. Although numerous Christians were persecuted for their faith in the 90s, several ministers among this group were ultimately murdered brutally not long after this camp. This is the story of Haik Hofsepian, an Iranian martyr. Iran, December 1993. An Islamic judge condemned to death a zealous Christian convert from Islam, Mehdi Debaj. His only crime was converting to Christianity. Mehdi Debaj had already served 10 years in prison. A copy of Debaj's execution order was leaked out and got into the hands of Haik Hofsepian, the leader of Protestant Christians of Iran. Haik risking his life chose to speak out and launch an international campaign for the sentence to be overturned. Hike's campaign was successful, and Debaj was released only a few days before his execution date. But there was a price to pay. This is the story of one man's fight for human rights and the consequences he paid. The country today known as Iran was called in the ancient period Persia. And Persia played a very large role, particularly in the Old Testament, and to a less degree in the New Testament. Haik was born in 1945 to an ethnic Armenian minority family in Iran. A rare occurrence at that time, Haik's parents were divorced when he was just nine years old. Seeing the intense social and financial pressures on his mother, he began working on the streets, shining shoes to help support his family. In 1958, at the age of 13, a neighbor invited him to come to the prayer meetings they had started in their house. Soon after, Haik came to believe that following God was not about religion, but about a relationship with Jesus, and he committed his life to following the teachings of Jesus. واقعاً آنقدر تولد تازه دریشون محسوس بود که تمام دوستان و فامیلا متوجه این تحول بزرگ شدند. Haik's passion for his faith was contagious. And others soon began to commit their lives to following Jesus because of his influence. Haik believed that God was giving him a vision to preach the gospel to all. Haik, on September 14, 1967, married Tarkush, a courageous lady who completely supported his vision. In 1967, the leaders of the Christian church confirmed Haik's vision to plant a church in Gorgan, a radically Islamic part of Iran that had no Christians. Although in the 1960s, Iran under the Shah was closely allied with the liberal West, cities like Gorgan were still ruled by the mullahs and the mosque, and nothing was to threaten the glory of Islam. Haik loved people, and especially he loved the people that he was surrounded by, mainly Muslims, and they knew it. And as he went out on the street, they would recognize him, and he would talk with them, he'd pray with them on the street, he would bring them to the church, and some were baptized as well, and it didn't take long for many people in the city to hear about this church and this young pastor. In Gorgon, they met opposition and tragedy that would have sent most men into early retirement. 
متاسفین و تندروهای مذهبیشون گرفتار مشکلات می شد نامه های تحدید آمیز براش نوشته شد The opposition was not subtle either An extremist group called Tablaghat Islam would throw stones at the church's windows and sometimes even physically break up the meetings In the midst of all this hostility, as well as the economic pressure all ministers of the gospel faced, the temptation to leave the work of evangelism was very real. در اوایل خدمتمون در گرگان پیشنهادات کاری خارج از کلیسا با حقوق بهتری به های داده شد. او و تاپوش عزیز خدمت به خدا و مردم را بر مال و منال این دنیا مقدم دونستن و با فداکاری و سختی خدمت را ادامه داد. So despite the fierce opposition, I kept on preaching and many Muslims chose to turn to Christ. Those who chose to turn to Christ were often rejected by their families and their lives were threatened by fanatics. وقتی به عیسی مسیح ایمان آوردم، خانواده‌ام کاملا با من قطع رابطه کرد. و پدرم بهم گفت تو دیگه پسر من نیستی، پسرم برام مرده. Muslim extremists wanted to burn the church down. This was their only answer to the gospel. Before they reached the church, God spoke through a mullah. He stood before that crowd as they were headed for the church and he said, if you're going to destroy that church, you have to first destroy me. And that mob was turned away. The pressures of ministering in Gorgon were piqued by a very tragic personal loss. My wife and I and our three children went over to pick up Takush and Haik and their six-month-old baby. About 45 minutes before we reached the end of that journey, we were blinded by lights coming at us in the darkness and ran into the back of a farm trailer and our vehicle impacted that trailer with such a speed that the entire car was just ripped open. That was it. And we were all unconscious for I don't know how long, but all of us were unconscious. Hike's firstborn child died in that car accident, and the other missionary couple lost all three of their children. وقتی من اینو تعریف می کنم اقراقی نیست دهانش اصلا دیده نمی شد چشا بسته بود از باد شده و من متعجب و نگران از لای دندونا گفت هللویا شادی ممکن به شکل رهره نباشه ممکن به شکل خنده نباشه ممکن این شادی شادی امیر درونی حتی در بستر بیماری باشه ولی شادی است آرامش امیره خایق had his hands up as weak as he was and he was saying whether dead or alive praise the lord i would never forget that scene با وجود اینکه از شنیدن خبر فوت پسرمون بی اندازه ناراحت شدیم ولی تمام اون چیزهایی که خونده بودیم و موعظه کرده بودیم وقتش بود که در عمل اون را نشون بدیم افسر ما میگه که وقتی با اصلا برسیم in what seemed to be a tragedy, even at that time, I said I believed that God was going to turn into triumph. And he did that for Brother Hike and for us. The opposition was to reach new intensity when Ayatollah Khomeini's Islamic revolution drove the Shah out of Iran in 1979. 
and establish the world's first Islamic Republic. Christians and those who opposed the common faith were attacked in the very early days of the revolution. چهار تا بچه مسلمون هم رفتن اونجا نشستن اینجا می شد مرکز جاسوسی و میسینری و تبلیغ حمله می کدن و می زن این شراز the vicar of the Anglican church Reverend Arastu Seya had his throat cut in Isfahan terrorists broke into the apartments of the Anglican bishop Hassan Dehekhani and fired shots at his sleeping body miraculously he escaped Two gunmen got into the house and went um, to, to my parents' bedroom. And one of them shot from a very close range um, about five times. My mother put her hand out to protect him. Um, and she got shot in the hand and injured, obviously. Um, but not one of them uh, hit my father. In the outskirts of Tehran, other terrorists abducted Bishop Dehakhani's son Baharan and shot him in cold blood. مسیحیای انگلیکن و کانورتا خیلی سخت براش. یعنی به خصوص چون روابط با انگلیس بده و کلیسای انگلیکن رو اینها پارت اف چرچ اف انگلند رو اینها جاسوسخانه انگلیس میدونن به باش خیلی بد رفتار میکنه. When for example the Quran is quoted that there is no compulsion in belief it ought to be understood in a very real way then. Is a person in Iran free to disbelieve? Is a person in Malaysia free to disbelieve? Is a person in Indonesia free to disbelieve? If you're not free to disbelieve in a certain faith, then there is compulsion in that faith. Meanwhile, in 1981, when the new Islamic regime had established an absolute hold on Iran, the pioneering missionary to Gorgon, Haik Hofsepian, was elected as the superintendent of the Assemblies of God churches in Iran. Later, he was elected the Protestant church representative. As a person, I didn't think that someone was a vaccine, a day of the Church of the Church and others was a leader. He wouldn't go around often to the bigger church congregations, but he would travel throughout the land in order to bring support and encouragement to the smaller fellowship. Kilisai ma hiç alat musiqi nadashim. Tu ezir zamin jalese dashim va shad apunda nafar mishar nabudim. Ye bar ke shun tashvordan ye keyboard xeli kuchulu oru budam va bara banim bar unja ma. سرود که میخوندیم با موسیقی بود و خیلی خیلی جذاب بود برای ما همین با هم یه احساس داشتیم نسبت به برادرهای گیگار دو پدر ماها از تهران اومده دیدن ما During Hike's leadership he trained many ministers numerous churches and branches were established ایشان دید وسیع داشت برای اینکه خدمت در بین ایرانی ها را نه فقط در داخل کشور خارج از کشور نیز ادامه بده با وجود تمام این مسئولیت هایی که داشت خانواده جای اول بود در زندگی شخصی خودش بابا در ما بچه ها ارزش خواهل بود و مرد قولش بود اگه به من میگفت فردا تو رو پارک میبرم مطمئن بودم که زیر قولش نمیزنه و من رو پارک میبرم اگرچه بابا کشیش کلیسا بود خیلی شخصیت خاکی دلنشین آرام بخش و با مزه ای داشت و همه این رو درش می دیدن. Hike was a pioneer for human rights and humanitarian efforts in Iran. Hike organized over 80 volunteers to come to the aid of the Kurdish refugees. For over two months, a hot meal was given to the refugees every day. ایشون با سازمان های خیریه در ارتباط بودن که بتونه کلیسا از این طریق نیست کمک کنه چندی مدرسه در جاهایی که زرتله به وجود اومده بود با همت برادر هایی که ساخته میشه برای اونها واقعا هم تشکر میبرم از همه شما مخصوصا از برادران عزیز ما و 
دستان در پاره در محاوات دولتی که ما با هم کاری کردن و این اجازه را این افتخار را بارد که ما هم سلیم باشیم در صاحبر این محصه The new government soon made its wishes very obvious to Haik, the leader of the Iranian Christian churches. The unfair restrictions were many. No services were to be held in Persian. All services had to be on Sunday, not Friday, the national weekly holiday. Only card-holding members of the church could come to services. Membership lists had to be given to the government. New members had to be approved by the government as well. And Haik gave his brave and defiant response to the government's orders. I and my ministers will never bow down and agree to such inhumane and unjust demands. Our churches are open to all who want to come in. In the calm, they were like a bird, but when they were given a decision, they were given a decision to give them a decision. There was constant intimidation from the Islamic regime, and in response, constant courage from Haidt. They were completely convinced that every Iranian, from every nation and nation, has the right to make the Messiah in the name of the Messiah and the God of God, and to make it to him. In one of the things that they had in the past, they asked me a question that we have a list of all of the churches from all of the churches. که خونه شما آمدن، کلیسای شما آمدن و جالب این بود که در هفت سالی که من در احواز بودم حتی اگه یک نفر برای یک بار خونه من آمده بود اینا اسامی اون رو داشته بود In 1990, this clash of wills between the government and the church turned murderous when the Islamic regime ordered the execution of Reverend Sudman in Mashhad سخت بود چون ما چهار تا بچه کوچیک بودیم و مادر میگذنه نابینا بود و با خودم فکر کردم که چطوری میشه ادامه داد به طور کلی در اسلام خروج از اسلام به دین دیگر ارتداد و قتل طرف باجه متا کشورهای مختلف بر مبنای قوانین مدنی خودشون منهای مثلا بعضی از کشور اسلامی and of course, there are 120 verses in the Quran that talks about killing and promoting Islam with the sword, which is unfortunate, but it is the truth. Many moderate Muslims don't believe that, but the fanatics who stick to the text, and this is our problem, our problem really is with the text, the text of the Quran and the text of the Hadith, which encourages that. Unfortunately, some people believe it, and although it's a minority, it is still a major problem. <laughs> آخر دنیا عزیزان زمان است که خدا به عنوان انتقام دیرنده نیست تا انتقام خود مقدسی رو بود. Despite the obvious danger, Hike spoke out against the murder of Reverend Sudman and made sure his blind widow and children were looked after. من خودم شخصا وقتی با این مسئله شهادت ایشون مواجه شدم مثلا یه قوت قلبی پیدا کردم. انگار مسئله مرد یک مهاجرت کوتاهی شد از این دنیا به دنیا بیشتر اون آیات کلام خدا برای من زنده شد مسئله بهشت و ملکوت خدا برای من خیلی زنده تر و ملموس تر شد فهمیدم که چرا پولس مثل پردستی من میتونست بگه که من بین دو چیز گیر کردم 
از یه لحاظ میخوام که زودتر برم به آسمان ملکوت آسمان را ببینم از یه طرف هم میبینم که وجود من برای خدمت به کلیسا لازم The Church of Iran did not die under such persecutions. It continued to grow. Reverend Sudman would not be the only Christian minister to be killed for his faith in the 1990s. Mehdi Dabaj was a Christian convert from Islam who was imprisoned as punishment for his conversion. In 1993, an Islamic judge in northern Iran condemned the imprisoned Dabaj to death. His only crime was apostasy. Mehdi Dabaj had already served 10 years in prison. <laughs> Upon hearing of Dabaj's death sentence, Haik began to immediately plead his case to the Iranian authorities for Dabaj's sentence to be overturned. They ignored his pleas. Then, in a sudden turn of events, Dabaj's official death sentence document was intercepted by a prison official who was sympathetic to Dabaj's case and leaked a copy of the document to Haik. Finally, empowered with proof of Iran's flagrant human rights violations, Haik launched an international campaign for the sentence to be overturned. Haik invited the United Nations Special Representative for Human Rights to Iran to investigate violations of religious freedom in Iran. And at great risk to his own life, he sent out detailed reports to the international press. برای ایشون یک نفر نبود مسئله یک ملت یک قومه یک قومی که ایرانی مسیحی بهش اطلاق میشه و با وجود اینکه شخص بسیار حلیم و فروتنی بود اما صدای بسیار رسا و قوی داشت در مقابل حمایت از جفا دیدگان Hikes efforts made Dibaj an international figure prompting even the United States Congress to officially intercede on Dibaj's behalf with the President of Iran. If you are a man of a man, a man of a man, whatever you are doing, it's not for you. The people who are in the life and came to me and told me that you have the name of our name, we are better in the life. Every day you say that this side is behind the door, it gives us better food for us to give us better food. اینه که کاری که ایشون کرد کار درستی بود باید هم میکرد یعنی وقتی شما یک نفر رو به عنوان گروگان یا زندانی دارید اگه فراموشش کنید این چیزیست که رژیم میخواد And Haik said if there is no religious freedom in Iran then I don't mind but when they claim to have religious freedom and at the same time bring so much hardship and persecution on our people I cannot stand and I have to stand for the truth and justice and make this known throughout the world. The government of Iran wanted to avoid any sort of transparency and did not want its internal affairs exposed internationally. And Haik understood there could be consequences to pay for his actions. <laughs> بازی با آتش هست، دست پوداشتن لانه مار هست مدم خونش گفتم با این رژیم در نیافت اینها نقشه قتل تو رو هم دارن یه نگاهی کرد گفت من برای خداوند حاضرم گفتم آخر تو چهار تا بچه داری؟ یه نگاهی کرد گفت دیباج هم چهار تا بچه داره هایکس کمپین بود سکسسفل Bernard Levin highlighted the case in the UK's Times newspaper, and questions were asked in the British Parliament. On January 16, 1994, 
Mehdi Dibaj was released. Today, Mehdi Dibaj is a free man because of Hayek's appeal on his behalf. This is what Hayek wrote. Praise the Lord for all his victories. Brother Dibaj has just arrived in our house. When Dibaj entered the house, all the believers started singing, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. This was the best welcome they could offer our hero. جا خیلی منو بغل کردن و گریه کردن خب بعد از شاد فکر می‌کردن دیگه هیچ وقت بچه‌هاشو نمی‌تونه ببینه و مرتب زنگ می‌زدن از جاهای مختلف تبریک می‌گفتن The defined bravery of Hike had won freedom for his brother but there was a price to pay I was sitting right at my desk when I got the word and I said what a marvelous example of a man who used his voice and who used his influence and who used his reach for the sake of a fellow believer. And there he was speaking for Mahdi Dibaj to make sure that he would get that which was fair and proper and not that which was manipulated. I was extremely touched by the fact that Brother Hayek went out of his innermost being to rescue a Muslim believer and succeeded, not knowing for certain what the result would be. But I believe he knew in his heart that oftentimes a life for a life. The Iranian government released Mehdi Dibaj to save face on the international stage. But at home, the regime had lost face. در واقع میتونم اینطور بگم که یه احساس مبهمی در ذهن ما بود که چطور بعد از حکم اعدام بعد از دیباج حالا آزاد شده و ظاهرا یک خوشی ما را گرفته بود ولی یک ابهام پر سرش بود که این به کجا خواهد انجام میده. Now the regime's plan was to teach a lesson to Hike and other ministers such as him to keep their faith to themselves. So Hike's name was immediately elevated to the top of the list to be eliminated. <laughs> On January 19, 1994, just three days after Debaj was released, Haik was on his way to Tehran's Mehrabad International Airport when he disappeared. همون با نگرانی در دعا بودیم مخصوصا که میدونستیم یک ارتباطی هست بین آزاد شدن پدرم و فعالیت های ایشون با توجه به جریانتی که در رابطه با بردار دیباج اتفاق افتاده بود ما در ده ها نامه که به همه مقامات نوشتیم نوشتیم به احتمال قوی توسط برادران امنیتی ایشون خوانده شدند یعنی ما این احتمال را می دادیم که ایشون را بردند برای صحبت برای بازجویی و هر چی که هست نگرانی 
نگرانی ما روز به روز بیشتر و بیشتر میشد چون که هیچ خبری نداشتیم ولی ما هنوز امیدمون از دست نداده بودیم و انتظار اومدنشون رو داشتیم یادمه که حتی برای یه ساعت اگه از خونه بیرون میرفتم از بیرون زنگ میزدم خونه که ببینم پدرم خونه رسیده یا نه چونم بگم روز 20 ساعت مشغول فعالیت بودیم که به تمام گروه هایی که با ما در تماس بودن و آشنا بودن خبر بدیم که شخصیتی مثل بردر های ناپدید شده و خطر بزرگی در این مورد وجود داره طبیعتا همه کلیزا منبعث شدن به حرکت اومدن به تمام ادارات رسمی به ذات کشور خلیفگری ارامنه دفتر ریاست جمهوری دفتر رهبری حتی به پزشک قانونی مراجعه کردیم برای دیدن اقتصادی که شاید به من ناشناس بوده همه حتی جاهای معتبر قانونی اثر بی اطلاعی می‌کردن 11 days later the family was asked by the police to visit the morgue وقتی وارد پزشکی قانونی شدیم در اونجا آلبوم جلوی ما گذاشته شد که در اون عکسای اجسادی بود که بی هویت بودن قطعات بدنی که سوخته بودن یا در تصادف قطع شده بودن و بعد از نگاه کردن تمام این عکس ها با خوشحالی متوجه شدم که پدر من در هیچ کدوم از این عکس ها وجود نداره و در حالی که کم کم آماده می شدیم که برگردیم گفتن که یک عکس دیگری هم هست که میخوایم این رو هم ببینیم وقتی این عکس رو آوردن و روی میز گذاشتن من در این عکس چشمایی رو دیدم که برای سالها منو محبت کرده بود و اگرچه این چهره در خون آغشته شده بود ولی تشخیص این چهره برای من خیلی سخت نبود و متوجه شدم که این پدر من هست در حال که همه امرا با عشقا بلعخص بعد ادوارد به عنوان برادر تنی و جوزف به عنوان پسرشون خیلی دل شکسته تمام صحبت این بود که به تاکوش چی بگیم چطور این پیغام را بعد از یازده روز به تاکوش برسانیم که هر آن منتظر بود هایک به خونه برگرده یادم میاد در لحظاتی که از پله های خونه بالا می رفتیم چهره آنره برادر کوچیکم و به ذهنم می اومد برادری که ده سالش بود و با خودم فکر می کردم که ایشون بدون پدر چجور باید زندگی بکنم من در اتاق خودم بودم و بعد دویدم به طرف جوزف و همگی بغل کردیم هم دیگر رو چشمان گریان و قرمز جوزف را دیدیم دیگه مطمئن شدیم که چه اتفاقی افتاده همون موقع بود که واقعا شوکه شده بودیم و گریه می کردیم و نمی خواستیم باور کنیم نمی دونستم خانواده شاده ما دیگه از این به بعد چطور می تونه بدون پدر ادامه بده پایک said that if his life would be taken away he would be ready for that but he made one request that he would not die silently we say good night hike we will see you in the morning And if he had a chance to live again, he would have done everything to give his life for Jesus so that every person would hear the message of salvation and come to know him. کشیشانی که در آمریکا بودیم حسابی اون روزو گریه کردیم و از نظر انسانی اصلا غیر قابل تحمل بود اون بس I wept when I heard it but rejoiced that there were people like him who were courageous 
fight to the last moment. And that's what true martyrdom is. He did not use violence. He did not spread violence. He was against violence and was protecting the innocent. That's how he was willing to die. That's what martyrdom is. Martyrdom is not violent in its means. It is peaceful and authentic in its method. سیاست کلی برخورد با اینا بود حالا چرا اینو انتخاب کردن برای اینکه دیدن این از همه اکتیف تره این فعال این نمیذاره سر و صدا میکنه او رو انتخاب کرد With complete contempt for the rights of the family the authorities had already buried a man they knew to be a Christian in a Muslim graveyard only six days after his death پس از شهادت بابا فرصتی داشتیم که به محل قتل بریم و این شخص افغانی رو که اولین شخصی بود که جسد رو پیدا کرده بود ببینیم و صحبتی داشته باشیم ایشون میگه که من کارت شناسایی رو که در جیب پیراهن ایشون دیدم و اون صلیبی رو که روی کت ایشون دیدم برای من واضح بود که ایشون یک شخصیت شناخته شده مسیحی باید باشه ولی برای ما خیلی سوال برانگیز بود که چطور یک شخصیت شناخته شده مسیحی بعد از 6 روز از طریق پزشک قانونی به عنوان یک شخصیت بی‌هویت دفن شد. The church demanded the body to be moved to Tehran's Christian graveyard. خاک زدیم کنار در اون گل در از بارون می اومد در گل و لجن باور کن فقط یک نایلون یک مشما بود که روی بدن بردرهای بود کشیده بودن از زیر خاک آوردیم بیرون. بالاخره جسد رو منتقل کردیم به محل شستشوی When they saw the corpse, they learned how brutally Haik had been killed. سوراخی بود که شاید فکرم با چین رو زدن شاید دیلم آهن من نمیدونم و من میتونم اعلام بکنم که برادر مایک از ایسان دو بار قلب خود را تسلیم ایسای مسیح کرد یک بار وقتی به او ایمان آورد قلبش را داد و یک بار در شهادت او قلبش سوراخ شد به خاطر ایسای مسیح رسولا وقتی که در این حالت به اسطلاح فوت میکنه همین حالت فریز میشن ولی جالب بود که ایشون صورتشون بسیار آرام بود یعنی موقعی که روحش رو می سپرد مطمئنا اون دعای مسیح رو میکرد خداوند اینها رو بیا مرس که نمیدونم چه کار میکنن ولی کلام خدا وقتی در رابطه با قهرمانان ایمان صحبت میکنه میگه آنانی که این جهان لایق ایشان نبود و من میتونم بگم این جهان لایق برادرم هایک نبود مرگ نابهنگام برادر هایک ضربه بزرگی بود برای من نمیتونم بگم که برادر هایک جایگزین شده چون که جایگزینی برای برادر هایک هنوز پیدا نکرده این یک به اصطلاح از دست دادن برادری بود که من خیلی دوستش داشتم این چیزا رو ما در تاریخ خونده بودیم در کتاب اعمال رسولان اینا رو مطالعه کرده بودیم ولی فکر نمی کردیم در قرن بیستم نیز این اتفاقات در سرزمین ایران تکرار بشه مخصوصا که به اون طرز وحشیانه بردار هایک را با 26 ضربه چاقو کشته بودن واقعا اون آثار زخم ها و این جراحت ها همیشه در ذهن ما میمونه که ایشون چه بهای سنگینی دادن نه فقط روحانی بود فوق با افتدا زباندان موسیقیدان خاننده بیکانی دکتر در خانواده چون معلومات تبریش هم خیلی زیاد و یک شخصیت جامعه شناس روان شناس کسی که همه فرم حریف بود در نهایت فروتنیش این مرد حاضر بود همه این ها را پای مسیح بریزه به خاطر اینکه میدانست به چه کسی ایمان ها بوده بود All 
all Christians knew what a great sacrifice the church had given. I did lay down his life. And there we again echo the words of Jesus. They did not take it from me. I laid it down of myself because he spoke up among others for many who said I should have died. So که ایسای مسیح صلیب شد یک نفر میدونست که ایسای مسیح به جای او صلیب شد و اون باراباس بود اگه در کلیسای ایران یه نفر میدوند برادر هایک به جای او جان من هستم و کاش دعای همه ما امشب عهد و پیمان همه ما امشب با ایسای مسیح همینطور باشد همینطور که تو به جای من جان تو فدا کردی من قول میدم از این به بعد هر دقیقه زندگی هم رو برای جلال تو رو زندگی کنم و برای تو بمیرم ما هیچ وقت پشیمان نشدیم که برای افرادی مثل ایشان برادرهای جون خودش رو فدا کرد And the word of God says, greater love has no one than to give his life for his friend. Jesus gave his life for us, so we can be his friends. And I gave his life for a friend to the glory of God. And for that we praise the Lord, always. For us, it was very interesting that the most Farsi Jews of Messiah were in the name of the Lord and the Lord and the Lord. و شهادت برادر هایک شهامت آنها را بیشتر کرده بود. A large group of government officials made their presence known at Hike's funeral, confiscating rolls of film and videos in order to identify and intimidate those in attendance. Christians from around the world brought their support and prayers to help the family recover, heal and forgive. تمام ایمانداران دنیا با ما بودند با کارت ها نامه ها میتونم بگم بیش از دو هزار تا کارت و نامه به دستم رسید که برای من فقط کارت تسلیت نبود بلکه ایماندار ها بودن که انگار دست به دست هم داده بودن و برای خانواده ما دعا میکردن دیگر کلیسه های ایران نیست در این اتحاد با ما بودن ما خود را تنها ندیدیم برای برای این شهادت برادر های نه تنها کلیسا را تضعیف نکرد بلکه مؤمنین واقعی را بیشتر مشتعل نمود و عشق آنها را به خداوند قوی تر و عمیق تر ساخت. Hikes martyrdom was not the end of the persecution in Iran. Only six months after Hikes death on July 1994, Reverend Mikaelian was shot in the head. He was a zealous Christian teacher, writer, and pastor. Only a few days later, on July 5th, 1994, Reverend Mehdi Dabaj was found dead in the forests of Karaj, near Tehran. When we heard that Shish Mikaelian was a man who 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 was a man. و بعد وقتی رفتن و جنازه ایشون رو پیدا کردن اونجا آدرسی بود از اینکه نشون میداد بر در لیباج هم در جای دیگری دفع شده در از سه روز اختلاف دو کشیش دوباره شهید شدن دو years later on September 28, 1996 Reverend Mohammed Bakhir Yusefi was found hung from a tree in northern Iran. He was known as Ravon Bach, meaning soul giver. برادر هایکو از دست داده بودیم. خودمون تنها شده بودیم. حالا شوهرم هم از دست داده بودیم. دیگه خیلی تنها شده بودیم. پس برای من خیلی باور کردنش سخت بود. Those who were behind such killings were never officially introduced or identified. در حداقل یکی دو مورد اینا وقتی کشیشها رو به قتل رسوندن 
تدارک و برنامه شون این بود که اینو به گردن مخالفا بندازن و بگن کسانی میخوان ما رو بدنام بکنن اومدن کشیش ها رب بین میبرن More recently, in 2005, Korban Turani, a house group leader, was killed in front of his door. Just minutes later, his family faced his bleeding body. His throat had been cut. People behind such criminal acts are brilliant people. They know exactly what they're doing. They know how they're doing it. They know what the end game is in mind. The Muslims themselves that I have talked to have made an interesting comment. They say that there's a very thin line between the so-called moderate and the extremist. Uh, we use those terms, but isn't it interesting when the so-called extremists do what they actually do, the moderates are the last ones to really stand up and condemn it. It's almost like the extremist is used as a front for what greater numbers of people want to accomplish. And so you twist words, play with words, create caricatures, and then when it is a terrible act, the extremist gets blamed. همیشه دشمنان انجیل فکر کردند با به شهادت رساندن مردان و زنان ایمان میتونن باعث تضییف کلیسا بشن. اما اثری که بر کلیسای ایران بر خادمین آن موقع گذاشت اثری بود که ما هم آماده این اگر ایشون به عنوان ناظر اسقف و برادر ارشد ما جانش را فدا کرد ما هم همین راه را که همون راه صلیب از راه انجیل مهم ادامه بدیم بعضی از آنها نامه هایی به ما دادن و حتی افرادی نامه هاشون رو با خون امضا کرده بودن و وصیت خودشون اونجا نوشته بودن و پای نامه نوشته بودن برادر ادوار قصه نخور ناامید نباش ما تا پای جان با شما ایستاده ایم و حاضریم خونمان را در راه مسیح بریم و خداوند در همون روزا با من صحبت کرد که کلیسایی که از شهادت و از مرگ نمی ترسه این کلیسا هیچ وقت شکست نخواهد هر جا که خون مقدسین مسیح ریخته اونجا کلیسای مقدسین مسیح رشد کرده چون هر چی بکاریم همون رو درو می کنیم Today thousands are coming to Christian faith and are being built up in ways hike perhaps only dreamt about میتونیم ایران را با دو دیدگاه نگاه کنیم یک دیدگاهی که دنیا میبینه دیدگاهی که مدیا منتقل میکنه که شاید دیدگاه خیلی منفی و تلخی است که مسائل عجیب غریب اتفاق میفته و دنیای طور دیگه میبینه اما دیدگاهی که از طریق کلیسا میتونیم ببینیم دیدگاهی است که کلیسا آماده است و ایران برای انجیل باز است کلیساها فعالند و بسیاری در تمام اخص و نقاط کشور تشنه خداوندن، تشنه انجیل هم، تشنه ایسای مسیح هم، تشنه محبت هم. و این نشون میده که در طول این سالها خون شهده، دعاهاشون، خدماتشون نه فقط دفع نشد و فراموش نشد بلکه باعث شد که یک موج تازهی برای حقیقت بیدار بشه و این محصول اون زحمات هست And I know first hand that uh, Brother Hike's family and other members struggled with this uh, spiritual battle of forgiving and releasing and beginning to pray for the enemies. This was not an easy process, but it was a process that God the Holy Spirit brought about. And it has been a great witness to me as I've seen the church in Iran intercede and pray and weep for those that persecuted them. <laughs> بسیار کمکم کرد که میگوید اما به همه شما که سخنان مرا میشنوید میگویم که دشمنان خود را دوست بدارید و به کسانی که از شما نفرت دارند خوبی کنید After several years Hikes family immigrated to the US and despite the tragic loss they still continue to minister to Iranians and others من واقعا خوشحالم که میتونم با خانواده کاری رو که خداوند در زندگی من انجام داده با مردم در میون بذارم کلام خدا از طریق ماهواره ها و از طریق اینترنت در اختیار ملت ایران قرار میگیره و توجه داشته باشیم تشنه آب رو پیدا میکنه در پای زندان تو این روز میتونه باز بشه Christians has allowed the churches in the West to recognize their freedom and to realize that God is continuing to work in the hearts of the people of Iran. 
there will be no change in our work in the world and the confrontation with Islam until we as believers in Jesus Christ begin and learn to spell Islam as I sincerely love all Muslims. Hayek understood that the Muslim is not his enemy and he gave his life that the Muslim would understand that the love of God wants to reach them and they're not an enemy. Hayek wanted his life to bear much fruit. Jesus said, fruit will only be produced if the grain of wheat fall into the ground and die. تاریخ کلیسای ایران هیچ وقت این از ایران را فراموش نخواهد کرد. اینها الگوها و نمونه های بسیار درخشانی هستند که تا جاودان اسمشون باقی خواهد ماند. هیچ چیز مخفی نیست که آشکار نشه. به امید روزی که تمام حقایق در مورد این شهیدان و در مورد کار خدا در ایران و تعداد زیادی که به عیسی مسیح خداوند به عنوان نجات دهنده و خداوند شخصیشون تسلیم شدن آشکار بشه Today thousands of people around the world are being persecuted and killed for their faith Oh, Lord, you